Hello, hello. I am excited to do another video for Challenge Accepted. And what we're going to work on today is a challenge that's on Facebook for stash busting. And it's an April challenge. It's the, the first sketch challenge. And it's using this sketch right here. Let me make sure it's nice and clear for y'all. So we're going to do this right here. And Kathy's doing the same sketch. And it's funny that our layouts always turn out so incredibly differently. So it's kind of fun to see how different people will interpret the same exact sketch. And we post them on the same day. So look right down there for her link to see her channel. She is just an absolute artist. So it's a, it's a treasure just to have her in the scrapbooking community. So make sure to go down there to look. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you. Okay, I know I'm using this piece of paper. And why does it look like a disaster? Because in the picture right here, see this circle here? I thought I wanted to use some of my painty things to do that and do some really big splats. So I thought I'd go ahead and treat it with clear gesso. And I did that last night. And so with that in mind, I think there's always something on all of my stuff. I think I'm going to use some Blick Artist white acrylic because I want it to be a true, true white. This stuff is super thick. And then when that dries, or if I force it along, I'm going to come in with this golden green gold. And the reason why is because I know I want to use some of the leftovers from this kit that I have, this My Mind's Eye Happy Days. And it has a lot of that green gold kind of tone in it. Wow, is that blurry? So it has a lot of that tone in it. So I'm starting there. So we have some of the blue, we have some of the green gold, and we definitely have white background bits. Now, the photo I'm going to use, which is two different photos from two different days. This is my youngest daughter, Ryan, and she is holding a container in each of them of chocolate milk. She comes home roughly three days a week with this same chocolate milk. And the funny thing is, the funny reason why, this is the whole story for this layout, is that she can only drink a sip or two before her stomach hurts of it. So let's just have her here so we can all think this is super cool, because I certainly do. So this girl does not drink this for herself. She brings it home because I love it in my coffee. So a few times a week, she brings it home, she hands it over to me, and I think it's the sweetest thing ever. The team she plays for when they're done with workouts, they get to grab from the milk, the milk, uh, I guess, fridge, vault, whatever you'd want to call it. So that's what this whole story is about, that she doesn't really want it, but she wants me to have it. And that is one of those little tiny signs that I did something right, right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to make it go quicker because I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, let's get going. Okay, so we are starting off by using just some packaging uh, that you see there because I don't want to have to clean off a palette. That's me being good and lazy. And I think where I disappeared to just now is, yeah, I was looking for my baby wipes. So once again, I don't have to clean something up. So I added some water to the paint because the that uh, brand of paint, it's, it's super, super thick. So it's really great when you are trying to work on a canvas with it. But I find that when I'm doing paper crafting, I need it to be just a little bit more liquid. And so on the sketch, there was a big circle. So I thought I would try to freehand an incredibly messy circle and voila, it's a circle. All right, so I'm putting that to the side, getting my brush cleaned-ish so that I can go ahead and apply my green gold. And the nice thing was when I put the white down on the paper, all right, somebody came in for a second, so I think I went silent for a second there. All right, so you see that I'm going ahead and adding some of the green right here and since it is going on top of that really bold white acrylic, it is showing up just admirably, which is, that is the reason why I put down the white first. 
although I did want it to look as if there were different colors of paint in the background because that's kind of the direction that the sketch took us in. Alrighty, so what I'm doing now is I'm watering down the green paint a little bit and further watering down the white because I want to do some messy splattering. And I'm gonna use what I call my pizza box, which is just a box that was sent to me from a crafting scrapbook kit order. And I use that to try to minimize the mess that gets all over my desk. I get a little bit, but it's not that bad. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the same thing to the white because I want that to show up ever so nicely on my background and it does so it the white acrylic for some reason seems to be about the purest uh, that I can use for splattering like the regular sprays and whatnot can have a tendency to soak up in paper so we're going for a true color I mean, this is a mixed media background and very little of it will be showing, but I know it's there. And that's that's kind of the deal. And you now know it's there, so we're good. So I think what we're doing here is just getting a little bit more on the bottom left because that's where I'm gonna want my title to end up. So I went on a hunt really quick to find some alphas and I found these that are in this pinky peach tone and it matches pretty darn well to the pink peach tone that is in the stickers that I have to the left. But these have, it looks kind of like there's maybe a newsprint background to it and there's a little bit of sparkly bits on the alphas as well. Trimming up my photos quickly on my Vintage Creative Memories uh, little guillotine trimmer, which I use constantly. And I did go ahead and cut up a bunch of strips with the uh, leftover, I don't have hardly anything left from this little kit I had. So I went ahead and cut up from the bits and pieces that I had. And I'm gonna start layering the strips and getting them all in place. So now really this is the bulk of my design because I have the mixed media part slightly offset. I have the photos in a block and I have my strips going and then I realized that I needed to extend the strips in a couple spots that I had cut off, which is ridiculous. And the reason why is I had some uh, trap space and I don't like trap space on the right side. so. I will go ahead. So I will go ahead and I'm gonna tape my layout down. And the reason why I've started doing that is I realized when I scrap up that my background tends to go flying every which way. I mean, I moved that thing all over the place and I would just wanted to keep in frame. So I figure using a little bit of washi and I keep one roll at a time rabbit trail here. I keep one roll at a time of washi that's not my favorite on my desk to use up for all kinds of different things. So right now it's being used to anchor pages or I'll use it to hang up instructions for something or whatever. But that's what my current ugly washi is busy doing. So you saw that I backed my photo and I'm putting it on my layout and I'm gonna say hey, does it need another mat and I think we're gonna decide that we clearly need another mat and you're gonna oh and there's my title that I've come up with as well so you'll see you know that I've uh, used wax paper I put the embellishments that I think I'm gonna use on this layout as well as I went ahead and started working with my title to make sure that I have enough of the dreaded ease and all that kind of stuff to make a title. And I actually had to open both packages of my, uh, my alphas and they're both new in order to make my title. I was like, geez, I'm either a little too wordy, which I do like a long title or, uh, they're just not giving me enough of my ease. I don't know. So I did double mat my, um, 
my photo and I ended up liking that and I do have it also up on some uh, foam sorry you're getting a glare on the photo on the right I do have studio lights but I like the secondary brightness of this this cool odd light thing I have and sometimes I get a glare but I think we'll make it through so t-square ruler there that I use all the time because I don't it's so funny I like things messy but I liked controlled wonky if that makes any sense whatsoever you see on the right side I'm using this nouveau craft glue this stuff is the bees knees it has this really skinny nozzle so it's kind of taken over the work of having to use a fine line fine liner fine line bottle for me so I don't have to switch or move glue around it's just right where it needs to be all right so right there you see on the right those are the enamel dots that came with this kit and I've been doing a pretty good job using them up and then I thought um, that I did have these three by four cards that also came in the kit and I wanted to be able to journal about my little story a tiny bit so I'm going to use one right out in the middle not well you know right front and center it's not being tucked or anything but perfect mesh the papers and I like the cute little eyes on it and all that kind of stuff so that is getting taken for a spin but we'll go ahead and embellish it embellish it and make it part of the design as well this is where I'm looking at all of the cool bits that I think will work with my little story that we're doing here and it did uh it does help me to even with these small kits to go ahead and put the pieces that I want to use like I really really think that these will work so I'll pull the pull those and it really helps me to um to craft quicker if I have the products that I'm going to be using in mind as I'm going along if I have too many products I think it tends to overwhelm and I don't use as many on my page so if I choose a group it seems that I am able to use a lot more and I like more in my crafting more makes me happy all right so that's a cute little funny eyeball sticker and I do go ahead and pop that up I like it and it also is a direct diagonal to the cute little um, eyes that are on my 3x4 card and here I am using a little bit more foam to pop up more goodies sorry it's so far on the bottom of the frame but I think you guys have seen me pop things up a bazillion times and I am doing a little bit of Frankensteining on that little house with putting the foam on because I don't want to waste any of the little bits we paid for all this stuff so we might as well use what we have and then I decided that I wanted it going on to the uh, onto the photo block there so I took off the two edge pieces of the foam because the uh, photo was already up and so it took me quite a while of fussing around with these sticker photo corners so I uh, cut out a tiny bit of that just just because it was um, pretty much you looking at the back of my head while I was bent over the page trying to trying to get them to line up that's that super super thin kind of stickers and they just required a little bit more finessing than you needed to watch and also on that sticker sheet there were six of these navy blue dots and you don't see it as well in the video right now the navy blue dots on the navy blue but I was just repeating how I had them on the card as well as up top and it just gives your eye a little something to peek at it's not a big deal but I do like me some contrast so that's why I went ahead and used them up on the card and I also thought it was going to be um, one of those things that would just live in my stash if I did not get it on the layout I'm using these cute little sticker flowers and sprinkling them in next. You see there's one by the house and a couple on the upper left of the photo block. And this is where I start deciding what I want to do with all these extra bits. I have these really heavy chipboard um, banner pieces. 
So I'm going to audition them here, there, and everywhere, and then decide who gets to be a part of the party. And they're going to just end up being a part of my design, and it's going to be another textural element, which is something I'm all about. Or as Janet at RTS calls it, lump and bump. I do like my lump and bump, and I, I think I've been really dimensional since the the beginning. I started scrapbooking in 1996 and back then the supplies were limited and I found a way to make things lumpy just because uh, it just, yeah, not into flat scrapbooking. I see people that do it and they do minimal kind of scrapbooking or graphic kind of design and I think it's absolutely beautiful when I see that kind of work. Absolutely. But I don't know. I just... I think I'm just too tactile. That's That might be all there is to it. So please excuse if you hear my little friend, the English Bulldog, once again is next to me and he's finding it necessary to give himself a foot bath while I'm recording. He could be doing this at any time. Oh, but no. Has to be right now. So it's very snorty and liquidy and loud. It's kind of gross. Anyway, so... I go ahead and grab the three little stickers as well, and they look like little bannery kind of stickers, and I put those on the 3 by 4 card just to dress it up a little bit. And I am going to use these super perfect, great colors of enamel dots. And yes, I know they came with a collection, but if you can give me some lime green and some aqua, I'm a pretty happy girl. So I get sprinkling them a bit liberally, but that's okay. I'm the boss of my enamel dots, right? So this is my thinking because somehow I think better when my hands are tapping along. And I'm going to go ahead and do my journaling and it's basically just reiterating the story of my girl bringing me home chocolate milk after her workouts at school. I wonder if they know that she's absconding with it for me and not for herself don't know. Anywho, that'll be our secret, right? So, and I'm using my friction, I think that's how I spell it, F-R-I-X-I-O-N navy blue pen. I love this thing. I also have it in a light gray, but I wish, or at least at my Michaels, they only have light gray. I want it in like a, like a charcoal or a really dark gray color, and I have not been able to hunt one down yet. I know, it's a big deal. This is where I'm like, okay, my background is too plain, which I know is almost funny. So I need to get a little scuffy scuffy going. So I go ahead and torture this top piece, bend it in, maybe give it a little bit of a collar. And I, uh, you see I use my ATG there to uh, glue down a little bit, and then I'm going to trim off the excess. So what you're going to end up seeing on the front is just a little bit of that pattern so it will be repeated somewhere else in the page and I also will go ahead and do that on the lower left side I do the same kind of bend up but I'm using a different pattern uh, just for interest on the bottom part and I think it really helps to complete this layout all right let's go live all right y'all I'd have to say I love this layout for many, it's crazy busy. For me, it's almost quiet. I have my title. It's not about the chocolate milk, y'all, because it's just not. It's about people thinking about other people. And it can be a tiny thing, and it can mean so incredibly much that it can at least make my day. The little things are what make my day. And this little one right here makes my day. I say little, but she's taller than me. Anyway, this is it for today. Hope you like it. I had a lot of fun making it. And we will see you on Challenge Accepted super, super, super quick because we have something coming on Thursday. Okay, bye-bye.